Hello and welcome to the Real Sex Education After School. I'm Degree Waits and I'm joined as ever by the flying Kate Campbell. Hello, Mum. Hello, Diggs. You were doing a little plane sort of thing there, so mm. I thought I'd, I'd call you the flying Kate Campbell. And we will be flying today because we've got lots of fun questions for you, including one that Mum, <laughs> just before we started, <laughs> Mum went, now this is a big paragraph, Diggory, you sure going to be all right reading this? <laughs> um, He's dyslexic, dear um, listener. Yeah, yes, I am indeed. Uh, which, you know, the good thing, through the power of editing, you guys have no idea about, but, uh, but I am dyslexic. Mum is showing off at the moment her real sex education mug. My face is staring, my mug is <laughs> staring my mug in the face. And now Kate is showing her side of the mug. We're both on there. Um, do let us know again if, if, you, if you like the idea of the mugs, everyone. Um, I'm really enjoying the idea of that, of doing a, a competition. We still haven't had time to have that production meeting about what the question will be. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll think about it. And from then on, uh, and then we'll have on a little it's T-shirts. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, tote bags. Tote bags. Yeah, <gasps> coasters. Coasters. Yeah, I like the oh, idea. Oh, I'd of love to stick a mug on your face. Have yes. I <laughs> have I shown you yet my my coaster? Oh, can you yeah, tell me, can you tell me what good, that is? That is a Hugh Grant coaster. That's the one where he was arrested, isn't it? That's his mugshot. Yeah, shot. for it's his mugshot when he was arrested for um, things. Yeah, for things. Uh, Oompa look it up. Lumpa. <laughs> 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 oh god you're good okay a amazing lumpa lumpa. yeah indeed yeah. just a quick thing as well for the for the visual watchers and people at home mum you're wearing what can only be described as a lovely turtleneck i feel like it's really quite a comfy vibe in the studio today yeah. i'm wearing um maybe the top of a yeti um that is which, what it looks like <laughs> yeah I, it's like the the furriest hoodie in the world and it actually reminded me we got we got someone messaged in on on spotify Official.Sunny on Spotify said, I do actually fall asleep to this podcast. I enjoy the content and I find the two people talking very comforting. How sweet is oh, that? Oh, we yeah. saw them to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I, I don't know whether, what, how to think about this because there's another podcast that I know where the guy, he's really into metal detecting. And but I think oh, he's also yeah. a comedian. Have I told you about this? Yeah. And, and, and he was like, oh, the podcast is doing really well. But it turns out that basically it somehow got out in the online that the podcast is perfect to fall asleep to because it's a man crunching around like on gravel and, and, and you know, mud and stuff and just mm. beep, beep. So actually it's just a perfect <laughs> episode to fall asleep to. And he was like, oh, great. I thought we were here for the riveting chat and great banter. Mm. But however you guys listen, actually, that'll be the question on Spotify for this episode and everything else. How do you guys listen to the podcast? I'd be so interested to know whether it's in the car, in the bath, over dinner. Um mm. I bet asleep. loads of people listen in the bath or the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love listening to music in the shower. That's my mm. big thing. I've mm. gone through about 46 uh, portable speakers, um, but but it, it does, it's nice. Anyway, right. Speaking of portable speakers, I am the portable speaker today, and I'm going to go for this big, fat paragraph. Now, if you're about to fall asleep, this is going to be perfect because it's just going to be me speaking. <laughs> for the next 40 minutes whilst I get this, this paragraph out. But today is a masturbation special. We've got lots of questions on masturbation and this first one might be my favourite ever. Let me make it bigger at the very least. It's so long, but here we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 36 years old gay man. Again, I'm reading verbatim. He does say 36 years old. I'm a 36 years old gay man. I haven't had penetrating sex yet as top because when I tried to do it once long time ago I was embarrassed for not getting hard enough I never tried again when I tried to bottom once it wasn't pleasurable for me so I didn't do it again either back to the topic of me trying to top prone masturbation rubbing my dick against the bed came naturally to me since I was a kid I didn't know then that it's a way of masturbation at age 13 I ejaculated for the first time while I was doing it since then I do it at least twice a day Recently, I had a limited budget to go for an intensive surrogate partner therapy for a week to figure out why I can't get hard enough when I want to have an intercourse with another man and be the top man. I understand that intercourse isn't the only way of sexual pleasure, but I wanted to explore the specific reason of not getting hard enough. During the therapy, there was a solo exercise for me to play with my dick whilst having lubricant, and when I get hard, I practice putting on a condom. I couldn't get hard enough to put a condom on while playing with my dick by hands and watching the same type of porn I'd masturbate to. The surrogate and the therapist connected the dots for me. I have conditioned my muscles and nerves to get excited and ejaculate by a type of movement. 
prone masturbation, which engages muscles and nerves in a way that's different from that of intercourse thrust. Those who are used to hand masturbation do similar movements to the thrust of intercourse, so the problem is less severe. Because my budget was limited, I couldn't proceed with that therapy. The therapist told me that there are ways to break conditioning to prone masturbation, but it's not going to be easy. Example, committing to not masturbate again using prone and only to masturbate by hands, etc. I'm writing to ask you your opinion, please. Thank you both. Love heart emoji. Is there a way to uncondition myself from ejaculating by prone masturbation and instead condition myself to ejaculate by the common way of masturbation using my hand and a thrust movement? So there's two things here. And yes. well done. You Thank read it you. all the way wow. through. Um, I ho hopefully people have drifted off to sleep now. And uh, <laughs> the rest of the podcast, it will just be me and you. No, we want them to listen. Um, so two things. One is masturbating twice a day. Um mm. Is quite a lot. So I'm thinking, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I wonder if if this person is using ma masturbation as a way of comforting themselves, whether mm -hmm. they're using it to self-regulate. Because yeah. if they are, then they need to think about other ways of of, of regulating their emotions. And, it, yeah. it, and, and, and this sounds like somebody, they're asking this question and, and then they seem very unsure about what they should be doing, how they should be feeling. They're not, there's a sort of lack of confidence there. So it mm. may be that some help with just getting through the day and noticing other things that regulate you would be really helpful. Mm. Um, we were talking recently, so do listen in if you haven't already, about delayed ejaculation. Yeah. When people have an idiosyncratic masturbatory style and the one of the most common is exactly this rubbing yourself against the bed yeah so yeah this is a, a rub not not a thrust and i mean anything where you're where you're using very little movement mm. has the same you know it, it's not comfortable to have a big hand holding onto your or a mouth around your penis or or to or have it inside a vagina it's yeah. not the same feeling at all yeah. you want a rub not a you want a rub grab. you want a you want a free you want a free penis really mm -hmm. is is what you want and if you're putting it in something is that's not really working so yeah. it is it is no different though this from any other kind of sex therapy where you've got into a habit so mm. if a couple for instance always do the same moves the minute they start those moves, their brain goes, oh, this isn't going to work, for instance. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you, you go back to the same place. You go this move, then that move, then this move, then that move, then that move. So it's just the same thing. So the way to engage this guy's brain is to, is to have sex with the bed rather than with a person or mm -hmm. his hand. So, so his brain automatically goes, oh, right, oh, I know what we, what's required here and gets on with it. And mm. when he tries different ways, his brain is not engaged. It's much more difficult for that to happen. So most sex therapy programs will take you right back to basics, to non-sexual touch and build up a new set of neural pathways for the brain to get used to. And mm. the brain might get used to not being used to anything, you know, mm. waiting to see what happens. But you rewire your brain basically so that it's not using what are known as, officially known as, the quick and dirty roots. Oh, yeah. The the roots that the brain uses very often are called quick and dirty. And so, if the brain automatically gets a cue and goes to a particular place, it's used a quick and dirty route. You can rewire that, and that's mm. what sex therapy does. So, whether it's sex therapy as an individual, where you're given ways of touching yourself, which are which are different, and you do that over a period of time and and retrain your brain, or whether you do that with a partner or a bit of both. It mm. will still rewire the brain. So it, this is not an uncommon problem. It's not something to to get really worked up about and think is never going to work. It will, and it's my bread and butter. This sort of thing. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Neil Dusbrandom, I would say, you know, maybe try a sex therapist. If not, there is a book um, called by Bernie Zilbergeld. Oh, I thought you were going to promote your own book then. Called the New New Male Sexuality. Oh, yes. And it's the old male sexuality because it was written in the nineties, but it's a really good book, and it <laughs> yeah, talks yeah. about it talks about this sort of thing. So that might be helpful if you can't afford sex therapy. And do yeah. talk to your GP though, because there should be NHS sex therapy available too. Well, yeah, I think. I mean, that sounds great to me. Yeah, like we say. Also, I mean, could, could it be as well that the masturbating twice a day, as well, would that be? Um, could that also be affecting the? 
the ability to get hard in in like with yeah. partner, partner sex yeah there is there is i mean there have oh 36 yeah so is he, so another thing we talked about getting to the age where mm. you're pr- probably having to wait a bit longer before you can get an erection again before you can come again as well so you know yeah that would yeah. that would you wouldn't be so interested in partnered sex this is a re- i mean you know you've you've learned a reliable way of getting off so yeah. you've got, you know, so the other ways are not going to be as interesting or you might even be a bit frightened of the other ways mm. because you don't know them. Yeah so, yeah. so it's all about starting again. Okay. Well, wonderful. Let's have this one. Let's start again on a new question. Um, here we go. Whenever I try to masturbate with my own hands, I don't feel a thing. Is it normal or could it be caused by my illness? And then underneath they said, woman, bisexual, and in brackets, depression, anxiety, and panic disorder. I guess those are the illnesses they're referring to. Um, yeah, I mean, d- c- certainly antidepressants can interfere with sensation and arousal. Wow. Yeah. So absolutely. Mm. And anxiety and panic, absolutely. If you're if you're frozen, you know, with fear and anxiety, then you're probably, you know, or busy worrying about what you're doing and whether it's good enough, then, yeah, you're not going to get very far. You, you, you know Masters and Johnson, who sort of invented sex therapy, yeah. um, the couple? Um, yeah. They came up with the idea of performance anxiety and spectatoring, what they called spectatoring, where you're kind of watching yourself having sex going, is that good enough? And mm. if you're doing that then you're not in your body. And this is this is why most people need who come to sex therapy need to get out of their heads and into their bodies. And we're mm. always saying this on this podcast, aren't we? Yeah. Out of your head, yeah. into your body. And yeah. so this person is probably very much in their head, not in their body. So it's worth getting any meds you're on checked um, with your GP mm. to see if they can interfere with sexual functioning. And also maybe do some mindfulness and relaxation exercises and things like that and 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 start noticing your body rather than your your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get turned on by the, the sensations and feelings that you can mm. feel rather mm. than trying to get your head to do all the work and work over time to... And if you Google them, there are on. loads of mindfulness exercises which help you to notice, you know, cult sensations. Mm. Um, and I'm always talking about the pen and the hand. The pen and the hand. You're waking up, yeah. waking up the hands, yes. Waking up the hands. Uh, Dr. Betty Martin, look it mm. up. Or listen to our episode on consent where we talk to her and we talk about that as well. Mm-hmm. It's bloody great. Mm. Okay, well... Wow, we're flying through these. This is Ooh. wonderful. Let's come back. We've got a few more questions after this, uh, but let's have a little break and then we'll we'll finish them off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Welcome back to The Real Sex Education. After school, we're here mm-hmm. to finish off the questions uh, for this masturbation special. Um, Here we go. We've got two that are quite similar here. So I thought we'd just roll them into one. This one is from an 18-year-old guy from India who says, is watching porn a sin because we derive pleasure from seeing someone else, meaning it's not wrong to look at a stranger? Let's try and unpack that in a second. But this Mm -hmm. one's from Instagram as well. It says, hi, how do I overcome religious guilt associated with masturbation? Hmm. It's difficult. Is it a sin? <laughs> it's, no, it's not a sin. No, Good. definitely Just not. Just got to get that out. Yeah, get that out there now. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, people people may have their own personal beliefs about things, but but you know, generally anything that allows you to have sex is it which is which is meant to happen has mm. got to be good. So the, the, the idea of religious guilt, it's a problem for a lot of people or, or hang ups around sex and mm. whether or not it's OK, are common, very, very common. And sometimes people need to do something like role play so they can not be themselves, so they can enjoy sex, but not as themselves. Mm. So, so that's very helpful. Yeah. But very often people watching porn will identify with what they're watching Mm. And so, again, that's a bit like being a bit removed from it. Um, mm, mm. But, you know, what, it's difficult to know what, what would be most helpful for these people. Again, it might well be that new male sexuality would be useful for, for these guys. 
Mm. Um, well, yeah, that, yeah, that book. to see. But but you know, again, sex therapy might be very 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 helpful in mm. relationships. You generally speaking, most religions will are very chilled about masturbation if it is seen as a means to an end in in order to enable you to have sex with a partner as well, even right. if they don't like the idea of masturbation. And very mm. often the reason that that masturbation isn't favoured is because it it's thought of as wasting the your seed. Your seed, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. you want people to breed and so mm. you, you're encouraging that rather than masturbation because even long, long, long ago when a lot of religious texts were written, there were people who preferred masturbation to partnered sex. It's always been mm. a thing. So it's not all down to porn, guys. It has <laughs> always been a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, so I, I mean, f- yeah, the, the religious guilt, I feel like that's a personal journey, I suppose, that you've got to, you've got to square away. I think that's, that's, and like you say, sex therapy, something would be helpful. Reading books and stuff would be helpful. I, I mean, it sometimes helps to just unpack your thoughts around it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, because these things go very deep and we're t- we've talked about rewiring the brain. Again, if you if you feel aroused and you automatically quash that feeling and feel, um, feel terribly guilty and feel it shouldn't be happening, then you're, go- you, you know, that, that is very, very hard to rewire your brain without a bit of assistance. Yeah, yeah. But generally, when people when people find, a, you, you know, a loving relationship or they feel that what they're doing is is actually making them feel well, you know that that, that you know they appreciate that masturbation is good for them. Mm. Sometimes that helps a bit, but but really, you might need a bit of help from a therapist if it's if it goes really deep. Mm, exactly, exactly. I do, I, but also, I just want to. I'm trying to pack that first one. Which is, is watching porn a sin because we derive pleasure from seeing someone else? I mean, mm. it's not wrong to look at a stranger. What, do, have you got any clue what that? I mean, I'm guessing that's like watching porn. Well, I think I they're, they're thinking you should you should only be seeing naked bodies or sexual uh, behavior from somebody that you you're married to or you know yeah in, you're in, in a relationship with, with yeah so yeah, yeah. looking looking at a stranger yeah it would not be okay yeah um for that person yeah and again like you say it's that's about squaring that away with yourself and what you're comfortable with and then and working through what you're comfortable with i suppose yeah i mean it is really really difficult because if you've been brought up to believe something or or if you've you've had and you've had that reinforced a lot through your culture or or behaviors it means it might just be something in your family mm-hmm. then it, I, I, oh, a really good example of how this can happen kind of inadvertently is people commenting on teenagers bodies for instance the family saying Oh, isn't Diggory coming along nicely? Look at his pecs. You know, I mean, if you were to say... <laughs> no one's ever said that. <laughs> no. Um, but, you know, if somebody was saying that, if I mean, particularly, yeah. it's particularly when they say it to girls, actually. I mean, mm. they, you know, comment on their curves and things. Mm. Um, mm. And, oh, what a good looking boy. He won't, it won't be long before he has a girlfriend. You know, those kinds mm. of comments are really not helpful. Really not helpful. Because they can make people feel that there's something wrong with what they're doing. Um, or mm. that they're being too forthcoming sexually, or that people are noticing them developing when they're actually very self-conscious about that, and they don't want people noticing their bodies, and it can put them right off. So they, so they will then shut down, and that mm. that ha- I, I have seen that happen so often. Yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah. And it's well-meaning comments by mm. your auntie or something yeah. can absolutely put you off sex. Yeah, and and that's similar to let's say actual codified religious stuff saying that masturbation is wrong those mm. sorts of comments can can embed themselves in you and then you start feeling guilty about any sort of sexual activity mm. or whatever interesting mm. okay well lots to think about there let's have one more question another paragraph not as big as the first but here we go i absolutely enjoy and adore masturbating to the point that i do it nearly every day I have noticed that I sometimes struggle to keep my erection towards the end of it when I'm about to climax, especially if I stand up. I'm usually sitting in my bed when doing it, and I go to the washroom so that the cleanup is easier. I've also noticed that I have trouble keeping up erections when wearing a condom. Should I be worried about any physical or mental issues, and can I do something to improve it? Also, am I doing it too much? Some additional context... I usually do watch porn during masturbation. It's a combination of audio, video, and written smut. 
but mostly video. I have a sex toy, a cock ring, and I did enjoy using it, but I kind of got bored of it. I get bored really easily. Tongue out emoji. I also sometimes suffer from low blood pressure. I'm a 23 cis male bisexual from India. For Kate, I'm getting a chicken biryani for dinner. <laughs> I hope I can send you a picture. Yeah. Oh my God, Please that's really send sweet. Me a picture. I, thank you so much. I would love that. <laughs> Just for people that don't know, really quickly, mum has asked for people to send in their dinners to us. I did try on the Google form to put a picture thing up there that you could upload your pictures, but it starts getting weird about Google Drives and you have to sign in and we have to sign in and it sort of ruins the whole anonymous yeah. vibe of it. So, but what you can do, please do keep doing this and ta tag, either send them directly to the Real Sex Ed at the RSC Pod on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. For no, me wait, what was no. I... <laughs> <laughs> Or TikTok. No, for I got me it wrong. Was X. <laughs> it's one of those X. Hang on a minute. Send us your pictures on Instagram, TikTok, or X. Formerly known as Twitter. We are at the RSC pod. Send us your pictures there. Either you can like DM them to us or or, or tag us. Even better. That'd be amazing. Yeah, post but send them and us, tag us. Post them and tag us. That'd be perfect. Uh, and we'll always reshare them. And mum will have a little... She can do a little review of them. But pe mum loves pictures of lunches and dinners and all that sort of stuff. Also, she I quite like loves. shopping. I quite like looking at people's shopping. <laughs> Okay, so, so we want either. shopping as well. Like we're talking yeah. groceries, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Amazing. not not cock rings and dildos. No, no, not no. so but, keen on those. But so basically, thank you very much. That chicken biryani sounds brilliant. Send us pictures next time you have one. Thank you for the question. Nice Mom, bit take of it away. bread. And yeah, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, am I supposed to answer the question there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there are a lot of questions there, actually, aren't there? The, the mm. thing is, this is all about solo sex isn't it and it's all about um and and it feels as if there's a little bit of concern about being caught you know that they're having to jump up and run to the bathroom um yeah yeah that's, know, that kind of ruins the vibe it, it, it does a bit i mean i'm wondering if he thinks that standing up lowers his blood pressure and maybe that mm. makes a difference. So it might do. I mean, if you stand up suddenly and your blood pressure drops and you feel all woozy, mm. it might be hard to um, maintain an erection. And the erection is is dependent on the blood being trapped inside your penis. Yeah. But the not being able to keep your erection when you put on a condom, things like that, that's much more likely to be psychological. So it's mm. much more mm. about, you, you know, sort of interrupting the flow uh, interrupting the fantasy or whatever it is, and yeah. then feeling very self-conscious. So uh, I, we don't know the context for putting on a condom. Is the condom being no. put on when you're on your own and so mm. that you don't have to run to the bathroom? Or is it when you're with a partner? Because that's a whole new thing. Yeah, yeah, the that's, psychological element of that, the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, particularly if you've, as you know, if you've got a way of masturbating that you're used to and you have a, a process you follow is quite, you know, the jump to being with a partner, it feels very different and very weird. And that that's going mm. to increase any feelings of anxiety you have about being with a partner. Yeah, yeah. So when you are with a partner, I would build up to intercourse gradually and mm. do, do, do more messing around. And yeah. you're bisexual, so there are going to be different situations with different people. Mm. But don't don't rush to penetration. Just just you know, look at other things first, and yeah. even just a nice little snog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it, interesting that so sometimes I struggle to keep my erection towards the end of it mm. when I'm about to climax. Is there? I mean, obviously they said especially when they stand up, but that maybe makes sense if they're thinking about rushing away and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And if they had low blood pressure, yeah. But... I mean, if there's if there's guilt or wor concern about climaxing as well, I mean, if you're worried mm. about if you're worried about making a mess and people finding out what you've been doing, then that's that's a total passion killer, isn't it? So yeah, exactly. So maybe that's why, why, that why things are yeah interesting. And with with, the, with so this might be a, a subject that's quite big to discuss, mm. but I you know you hear a lot of um, guys say, oh, you know, condoms suck, and and I mm. I get. I get softer when I have to put them on and all that sort of stuff. Would they, Would you suggest in this scenario, perhaps, to train yourself to be back into condoms, to use them when masturbating? Mm. Is that a good idea? Uh, I mean, also, it might help this guy out because then he doesn't need to run off to the toilet all the time. Mm, it might well, be an expensive it, hobby, but, you know. It might It might well do. Or he could just use a sock. Um, <laughs> yeah, quite American pie, that. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> it's such a, uh, yeah, I don't know why. That's always... I know that kind of makes sense, but it's the most that for me. I don't like that, but you know, whatever. It's up well, to, we're not we're not talking about you. 
So yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's know, true. Yeah, you, you do your own thing. We don't. We, yeah. we don't need to know. Um, the the thing is that that uh, this is somebody who seems to be having a lot of in uh, of, of masturbation and not so much relationship sex. And also thinking again, thinking of masturbation as a way of regulating their mood. So mm. it may well be that when they do have a relationship and they if they take it nice and gradually and with somebody nice, then mm -hmm. they'll have they'll, they'll settle down and stop worrying about these things so much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That sounds nice. I also like the idea. I, I don't know why. I love that question. It's a combination of audio, video and written smut. I just never hear the word smut enough. Love it. Yeah, it's Absolutely a great love it. moist, moist smut. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, don't, that's a horrible lovely. word. Oh, no. What that, what's that? Moist smut. <laughs> oh, God, that sounds like, moist smut sounds like a, I don't know, like a detective or a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know detective what I mean? It sounds smut. like a code name. It's like moist smut. Mm. Um, anyway, but well, this, there you this go. person is very is very focused on masturbation and, you know, may, maybe, I mean, they should get out more. And you know, <laughs> develop some wow. relationships. Christ, yeah. Christ! Just coming uh, out with this. there. Uh, this is clearly a lovely person. Anybody yeah. who's willing to send me a picture of their chicken bir biryani is a complete legend. Person, yeah. But they've got to get out more, according to you. <laughs> well, uh, they might have more fun. Yeah, I suppose. All right, wonderful. Well, <laughs> on that bombshell. It's time to end. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, and please, like I say again, tag us in your pictures of your lunches, your dinners. There doesn't need to be anything remotely sexual about them or relationshipy. Mum just loves them, and she will love seeing them all. So keep sending those in. Guys, we're having so much fun. Like I say, follow us wherever you're listening to this now. Whether you're watching this now, if you're on YouTube, subscribe. Leave us a comment. Give us a like. If you're on Apple, if you're on Spotify, give us five stars. Go to our show page. You'll find out how to do that. The rest of you, we will see you next time for some more Real Sex Education. Bye. Bye.